Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to show you something really cool. This is kind of like an offshoot of what we just did uh, in the previous video where we did uh, how much money would, or what would you be the better choice to pick a million dollars or to have compounded daily, double daily, a penny over a month. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same kind of thing, but instead we're going to look at compound interest, right? So I want to look at compound interest over a period of time, as in years. As we all know, or should have known, um, compound interest is the way to get wealthy over time, right? So what we want to do, well, let's actually, before I get into that, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And uh, the reason being is you want to be able to see all these great videos I've got coming. i got a lot more great videos coming on data science, analytics, and processing and coding. So be sure and uh, subscribe, like, and share. Now let's get back to it. So I'm going to start off with, like I always do, with the libraries uh, in R that you have to load in. So i got Cable Extra, Tidyverse, and Scales. We're going to be using all three of those today. If you don't have one of them, then you just run this little line right here called install.packages, quotation marks, and the name of the uh, library that you want to load in. Now, I already have them loaded in, so and we're going to end up with this wonderful graph down here, which is going to compare four different compounded interest rates. And the, the reason why I want to do four of them is I want to show you at 15%, 10%, 5%, and then, of course, if you leave your money in a bank account, the reason why you don't want to leave it in there, I mean, you have to have some emergency funds in there maybe, but that's fine, but you don't want to leave a lot of money there because they don't pay you very much at all. The actual national average right now for having your money in a bank account, if they even pay you interest, is 0.06%, not even 1%. That's horrific, horrible. Okay, so now, we're, and we're going to go in all this. We're going to solve this all in our data science. So let's start this off. First, we want to do is I want to look at, you know, 15 years. That's our goal here. So our initial investment here is going to be $1,000. I'm not going to do any additional stuff, so I don't want to have it so that it's kind of confusing as to how much money we put in over time and all that. I want to leave it simple that for this uh, analysis here. So we're going to do $1,000 at the start. Right? That's it. No more. That's it. You just put $1,000 one instance. And then what we're going to do is what's the rate going to be? The initial rate is going to be 10%, but we're going to show you how we're going to add in the 15, the 5, and the 0 0.06. And then this is going to be for 15 years, n equals 15. See that right there? So rate is 10, n equals 15. That's the first one. So what I want to do is I want to have the same compounded interest formula I did in the previous video. What we're going to do is we're going to say our initial investment, okay, which is $1,000, right, times 1 plus the rate. In this case, that's 10. But you're going to see it's going to be different down below because we're going to have different rates. Um, divided by 100 to the power of zero, so it's zero through n minus one. So if you're gonna do 30 instances, it's n minus one is 29 plus the zero. So that's, that's how you get 30 uh, periods or 30 years. If it was 30, if it was 15 in this case, then it would be n minus one would be 14, zero to 14 would be 15 years. Okay, that's how it works. And now the comp amount we're gonna take from there, we're gonna put that times rate divided by 100 into interest if you wanted to see what the interest rate was. We're not going to focus so much on that. But the main thing here is you want to do this line right here, okay, which we just discussed. And then what I'm going to do is I want to have 15%. So I'm going to have, uh, we put first you put that into the data frame, right? Because right now when you first do it, it's a vector. So you got to put it into a data frame called test data one. Once we do that, the rest of it gets pretty simple here because the rest of it, I'll just separate that out. Let's put that back here, uh, make it a little simpler here. So this is where I'm going to add in other interest rates, right? Okay, so we're going to have, we had a rate, right, of 10. Now we're going to have a rate 2, as the variable equals 15, rate 3 equals 5, so we're going to have 15, 5, and a rate 4, of 0 0.06, which is the national average bank account rate as of today, which is 517, 2020. Obviously, it's low now because we're in a recession. The coronavirus, COVID-19 going on and everything else, the housing market is kind of obliterated right now. So that's brought that way down. So many bank accounts don't even pay interest on them or they have to have, you have to have like 10,000 or above in there to get interest. Um, so that's how that works now. Below that, in each one, I have the same 
code. As I did above, the difference is I'm just using rate 2 instead of rate and uh, comp amount 2 instead of comp amount. And then I've got count amount 3, rate 3 is 5, same thing, 1 plus rate 3 divided by 100. The rest of that does not change, it's the same. And then I've also got rate 4, which is 0 0.06. You can see it right there. Comp amount 4, initial investment times 1 plus rate 4. You know, everything's the same there. And then every single one of these at the end gets written back into the test data one data frame as a new column, right? So I've got amount two, I've got amount three going in there, and I've got amount four going in there. You see how that works? So I've got the original one just goes in there to the data frame as the comp amount. And then we've got each one comp amount two, comp amount three, comp amount four, okay? So then what I want to do is I want to have an index count, but instead of days like we did in the previous video, we're going to do it for years, right? So I want to have how many years? 15 years, right? So I want to have these counted out sequence times, so it's seq.int of number of rows, n row, that's that function of test data one. That goes into years. So if I were to run this by itself without that, you would get this. It tells you all the years. See that? That goes into there and goes into the years. So if I do this, we can run all these guys together. Let's run up to there, right? So you run all those. We've got all that, okay? Next, we want to do is we want to be able to show you the data quickly and easily in a clear way. That's why I've got cable added in there. You don't have to use it. I just like to use it. So what I've got is the head of test data one, which is the top six rows, goes into DF right here, which is a new data frame called DF. And then we cable DF, piping in, cable styling, bootstraps options equals striped. Let's bring this over this way. Font size equals 10, and full width equals F. And what that will do is instead of doing the regular down here, it'll show it to you over here in a nice, easy to see, easy to read way. Okay. Now you can clearly see I've got some different data types going here that doesn't matter at this point. You could, I could go and make this really nice and get this down to two decimal places and same with this one and this one. It really doesn't matter at this point. That doesn't change the values. It just shows how, changes how it shows. That's not the main thing to do here. So the main thing I want to do here is I'm going to show you in a plot or a graph why it's important to look at compound interest and why you never want to leave a large amount of money sitting in a bank account because the bank then makes this and you get paid piddly on it. That's how banks make their money. So what we want to do next is I want to take each of these compounds. Right? So have, uh, let's do this first one. So I'm going to have each one of these with a ggplot. So I've got ggplot. I do this function once. Then I put plus geom line aesthetics. I've got to have the x and y variables, right? So comp amount and year for the first one. Size equals 0 0.8. That's how big I want the uh, thickness of the graph or the line. Color equals blue and data, the data equals test data one. Plus, notice I don't have ggplot anymore. I only do that one time, the ggplot part here. But each one of these is the same. Geom line, aesthetics, but now I just change out the y variable, right, to amount two. And I've got year. And then I've got this, the same thing, except that I want the color to be a different color. So I got blue, I got green. Next one I have plus geom line amount three for X, color of brown. And the next, the last one I've got geom line amount four, right? And the color is red. So I've got all four of those in there. And then I just do this scale Y continuous labels equals comma. So if I do run all this, right, so I'm putting that into LG1, and then I run that with that, this is what I get at this point, is this. I've got a graph. I can use this, but the problem is it's not pretty. So I've got comp mount, year, and I've got, you know, two, four, six, and I don't know which one's which, and I don't have any titles or anything like that, nothing descriptive, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly which year. I mean, I know here's eight, here's 12, but what about in between? That's 10. That's nine, I guess, but it's not very pretty. So let's make it look better. So what I want to do is I want to add into LG1. That's why I'm putting the ggplot into a, uh, a variable like LG1, because then I add it plus the labels. See that labs is labels. And then title equals compound, 
compounded interest, the subtitle is going to be because we're using four different lines, right? So I've got red equals 0 0.06, that's this one right here. Brown equals 5%, blue equals 10%, and green equals 15%. That's in my subtitles. I'm going to have the title, the subtitle, and then I'm going to relabel the X and Y as year and amount. So I've still got this as year, but I want that to just say amount over there. I'm going to have a caption, which is going to show down here to the right, which is going to say data source of XYZ Incorporated. I like to put a caption in there because it makes it look nice and tells people exactly where you got the data from. Okay? You don't have to have it in there, but I like to put that in there. Then you've got the theme, plot title equals element text. These are going to be 0 0.5 for both these. For the title and the subtitle, that puts it in the middle, right? Right in the middle. And then the plot caption, you don't want that in the middle. I want that to the right. So I've got a 0 0.9. I could put it as, ten, as, as a 1, which puts all the way to the right. I want a little bit off of that. That's why I put 0 0.9. Then I've got these two, scale X and Y continuous. Breaks equals sequence for the X. Remember, what are we at? We're at years 0 to 15, and I want to show them one apiece. So I want to see everywhere. I want to see it at 1. I want two, I want three, I want four, I want five. Okay, so by, to do that, I start at zero, I end at 15, comma, and then I do breaks by one every year. That's what that means. Y does the same thing, continuous, but for a different break. So you want the labels with a comma in them. See that? So I want to have 6,000, 4,000, 2,000. That's what the comma is. So I did not have that. I don't need a comma in those. And then the sequence instead here is going to be zero through eight. 8,500 actually I used here and and I want to break it out by 500 so I want to line it every 500 okay so that's what this does so we've got all that in there remember you got to have pluses at the end of the line don't put a plus at the beginning of the line it doesn't like that NAR so if I take this and I just run that through there watch what happens to my graph ah that looks nice so now I've got as I told you these are centered I've got compound interest I've got the it's kind of like a legend, but it's not a legend because a general legend does not work when you use lines like this. It's kind of like you're over your graphing, so it overloads it, and, it, and the legend will, not, will be automatically by default shut off. So you use something like this, and it tells people exactly, okay, the red I know is the bank rate of 0.06%. The brown is 5% right here. The blue is 10%. The green is 15%. I know by looking at this quickly, here's your amounts. Here's the year, so that means how many years you've compounded that interest. So if you look at it five years, they're closer together, but even then, you know, the green, which would be 15% per year, is at, you know, two, almost, no, about 1750 bucks versus the five, or the uh, five, the uh, red looks like it never got off the ground. Red still looks the same way here. Now keep in mind, banks loan your, inch, your, your money out at higher interest rates. Obviously, if you apply for a mortgage, you apply for a home interest loan, that's where they're loaning out other people's money. And they could be loaning it out at 7%, 6%, whatever it is. They're getting that money at 0.06% from people that leave it in their bank accounts. And they're making a lot of money off of that, plus fees and other things they charge people, you know, points and stuff like that on their mortgages. So, what you want to do with your money, this clearly shows you, is not leave it in a bank account. You have to have an emergency fund. Yes, you should have that. But beyond that, you want to put your money into diversified investments where it's going to have a return and a compounded return that is good. Uh, if you were to do, if you look backwards at like SPY or the uh, S&P 500, yes, there's recessions in there, like there's one going on now. But over a period of time of 15 years, your average is going to be somewhere around 12 percent, 10 percent, something like that. So you can see by looking at this, look at the difference. If you leave your money sitting in a bank account, it's bad. Yes, it's better there than if you took out a bunch of credit cards and had a bunch of bills to pay that have super high interest rates though they make bank off of you but the, you just so you have to curb your spending and live beneath your means and then take what you have extra and, and put it into investments where it's compounded and look what happens you could easily be in the blue or the green here and look what happens that thousand without ever putting another penny in it quickly becomes in 15 years you know seven thousand dollars versus you know thirty five 
versus, you know, what's this one at? About 2,000. So, the huge difference in that one clearly never got off the ground. I mean, he might be at $1,010 or something like that. It's horrible. Okay? So, this is just a data science way of looking at um, compounded interest and being able to plot it on a graph. And I could pick different time periods. I could pick 30 years if I wanted to. You know, I could pick uh, uh, 12 years, 5 years, whatever I want. I could, obviously, I can look at it on here, but if I want to blow it up and see it bigger, you know, I can pick five years and put it on here. But it just shows you how we can go and solve these things in R and then graph it. It's just really cool and neat. And these are all real business processes that I do on my videos. That we actually use in the real world in data science, data analytics, and visualizations, and business intelligence to solve problems for our uh, uh, users, our user base, um, and for executives and to display data and you know visualize and tell the story behind the data. You know, so when somebody says, I need to see redemptions for a period of time, I want to see uh, how the customers change their behavior. Well, these are things that we do to show that, you know, and then how do we visualize things over time? So I could take easily, you know, a change as I talked about in the previous video, that if I can document that it changed some kind of a change, you know, some kind of a certain coupon, for instance makes a 5% change in customer behavior and we document over time roughly around 5%. Well, we could go and look at it and say, well, if we did that coupon every year for 15 years, here's the difference. You know, if we can add one other thing to it, maybe with the green, you know, if we do it, but it's a bad year, maybe there's a recession in there or something like now, well, maybe it ends up being the brown line instead. So, and that's what executives want to see. So I hope you found this interesting and educational. Uh, please take a moment to subscribe if you have not done that yet. Share, like it, and uh, be sure and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you, hear what you're using these things for, uh, ideas for my next videos, all kinds of stuff like that. So thanks again. Have a great day.